It's been the most productive summer in the garden of my entire life here at the Epic Homestead, the first full summer here. So come along with me as I harvest bed by bed, going into the backyard and absolutely taking as much as I can out of the garden and sharing my successes and failures along the way. Kevin Spiritu here from Epic Gardening. Man, it's a beautiful, beautiful summer. It is transitioning into fall. So I'm going to figure out exactly how much I can harvest at one time. A James Prigioni style harvest. Shout out to my friend James. You really should go subscribe to his channel as well. And for those of you who cultivate the like button and drop a comment, I'm gonna walk over there. I'm gonna pick up a loofah. I'm gonna peel the loofah. I'm gonna cut the loofah into eight slices. And then I'm gonna turn those slices into a bar of soap with the loofah as an exfoliant. And I will mail it out to eight of you who like and comment on this video. I don't know if there's a better incentive than that on this earth. And let's get into the video. Right here, kicking it off at the beginning is probably the most precious plant in my garden. Many of you who've been following Epic Gardening for a long time may recognize this plant right here. It is ginger. It is the ginger from the most popular video on my channel of all time that I released more or less right when the world went into lockdown. So this video, really many of you who are watching this channel, you came because of this video, because of this plant right here. So it is kind of a special moment. It's been over a year, maybe a year and a half since I've been growing this. So. I'm a little nervous about what I might actually find, but it's been growing quite significantly. So with ginger, you can just harvest off chunks at a time. I wanna harvest the entire thing and kind of start a new chapter here. So let's just pull it up and see what we get. Okay. This whole thing might be ginger. You know what? I think I might need the help of someone who is very soon to have his own YouTube channel here on the Epic Gardening universe, Jacques the Garden Hermit. And here he is. Okay, so <laughs> I thought I could do this on my own. I actually can't. So maybe we can- uh, Hold it? Well, you think it's a hold or do you think it's a- Maybe we cut this. Yeah, maybe. Or dig it out. Here, we'll... let's use this. Oh, we'll go. cut this, come in and just slice. So now we're separate because we we're gonna harvest the sugar cane pretty close after this. So at least we're separated. You know what it is, is there's a lip and it's hard to get yeah. out. Ah. You can see it's growing right here. Yeah. All right. Let's... Oh, you can Coming. see, look at that, look at that, yeah. Oh, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. You got it, you got it, you got it. The muscle, Jacques <laughs> the muscle. Oh, look at that. Okay, well, let's do some excavation and see what we actually get out of this. Okay, so we're gonna try to wash it all clean and just see what we're left with. You can see we scraped the sides of the ginger there, but there's just so much. And this was almost a set it and forget it kind of crop. So there's a lot of these roots that are just actual roots and then the rhizome chunks, we wanna see how many we got of those. I suspect probably a decent amount, but more, less than we could have gotten if we had put it in the ground because it'll want to go horizontally and just keep developing. Next up on the list is corn. It's my second batch of corn for the season. So I did do some things that are a little bit different from the first corn video that I released earlier in the year. The first thing that I did that was different is all the offshoots that come out from the bottom of the corn stalk. I actually cut them all off for this crop of Martian jewel corn. So one single stalk, and it seems like we got bigger and better ear production, but we're only going to know once we harvest it. Soaks are nice and brown, corn, good size. That's all you need to know. Just crack it off the stock and you're good. Just for good measure, I'm gonna take one of these ginger from the front yard and harvest these out. Cause this is a true ginger. The ginger from the original video is an Alpinia galanga or a version of lesser ginger. So let's see how this one goes. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we wanna see right there. I'm gonna take one more. Just give you guys a sense of, so that's how ginger, classic ginger is gonna grow. You're gonna see these rhizome chunks, right? So we planted basically this right here and then it shot out like this and it looks absolutely incredible. Wow, beautiful. I'm gonna let the rest of these mature for another month or so, but these are gonna be delicious in the kitchen. Over here, this tiny little fig tree actually did produce this year. This is a yellow long neck fig. And so the figs actually don't turn a purple color, they stay yellow, but you'll know they're ripe when you can squeeze them and they're pretty darn plump and when they come really easy off the plant. So this one actually is ready. I actually think most of these are ready. With figs, a lot of the times you wanna prune off any fruit that exceeds maybe 
five-ish per stem and you'll get a, a better yield that way. But this, again, is a really young plant. I'm lucky I even got any fruit off of it this year. I'm gonna have to do some pruning and shaping and hopefully next year and next harvest, it's gonna be absolutely massive. Over here in the birdies round tall bed, I've got a mixture of bok choy and radish. They're both, unfortunately, ones that get destroyed by cabbage moths, which has happened. But the radishes, it's fine. We're eating them for the bottoms. They'll be just fine. I'm gonna salvage what I can of some of this bok choy here. So, you know, here, just come in, grab the roots, comes out nice and easy. You can eat the ones with holes in them. Just give them a nice wash, it's up to you. I do see quite a bit of insect eggs on these. So if I'm gonna eat this, I need to give it a pretty healthy wash, but we'll take a couple selections of the bok choy here. Maybe these two guys and let's pull some radishes. Radishes are really easy to know when to harvest because you can just feel around the base and feel how wide that root is. And then if it's good enough, just pluck it out. Let's grab a couple of these and see what we're working with. This guy here seems good. And yeah, there we go. It's a nice looking variety right there. Pristine and ready for a salad. Ooh. Even bigger, even nicer. Here we are out in the loofah arch. This is my best year of loofah yet. I could have given it a much bigger arch. Loofah can go 20, 30 feet or so. I just didn't need that many. And I have about, I don't know, about eight or nine really solid ones here. So let's do a harvest. Let's grab a couple. You can let them dry on the vine if you want to. This is almost ready to go. This is the Thai extra long ridged one, which is different than the one I grew last year. But man, hefty, hefty. These are the ones. If you cultivate the like button and you drop a comment, you might get a custom loof of soap straight out of the Epic Garden. So do that, but let's harvest this. Take a look at that. That's pretty good. Mixed between really dry ones and somewhat fresh ones, but let's just say your boy is gonna be showering in style for quite some time. It's been a really good year for flowers for me. I've gotten into them quite a bit. Zinnias being one of the ones I had the most success with. Queen lime being my favorite variety. This is not that, but I'm gonna build a little harvest bouquet as well, along with some cosmos and some dahlias. Cosmos is one of the flowers that I've grown for quite some time. Probably one of the easiest starter flowers to grow. It's gonna do this. You can deadhead it as much as you want. I can clip an entire little sprig just like this for my bouquet. The rest of it is gonna keep on going until the winter kills it off. So tons of different varieties on Cosmos, beautiful, beautiful flower and very easy to grow. Let's grab one more zinnia here and into the backyard for the big kahuna. This is my first year growing dahlias. I have to say I'm now an addict. I will be growing them every year from here on out. I mean, just look at the color on this, absolutely gorgeous. What I'm gonna do though is harvest it. There's tons of new buds coming out. I can push this into, oh, maybe October or so where I live. So I'll take this one off will allow the plant to have a little bit more energy to grow the rest of these little flower buds that are coming out. And I'll grab another one of the varieties down below. Gorgeous color on this one, but it's coming in, in for the season. Out back here, this is the biggest bed I've ever planted in ground. There's 42 varieties of peppers and 14 varieties of tomatoes. The tomatoes are kind of on their last legs right now. We'll push them for about another month and a half, but these peppers, there's a mix of the most mild peppers of all time to I think I have one that's 1.5 million on the Scoville scale. So if you want myself and maybe I'll bring Jock the Garden Hermit in to eat those on a video at some point, let me know. But what we noticed with the peppers this year was it took a little bit more water than I expected to really get them established. We had a very mild summer and now in this hotter than average fall, all the peppers are starting to pop off. So I'm going to run through and harvest as many as I can, toss them in that bucket right there and we'll see what we get. I know I just harvested some watermelons earlier in the month, but there's a tiny little guy here. It is the size that it's mature at, so this is mini love. Another one to add to the stack, my, my fridge is like, I think I'm four watermelons deep in my fridge right now. So if you have any watermelon recipes, let me know, because I got to start using these pretty quickly. The late summer harvest is abundant, and I got to be honest when I'm telling you, I don't think we even harvested a third of everything we could have harvested, but I only have one fridge. I can only fit so much in the fridge and it's already kind of full already with watermelons and other things. So let's talk about a couple of my favorite crops for this summer. First of all, this shishito right here. So, I mean, I'm half Asian. I, I eat shishitos like they're going out of style. 
amazing, amazing plant. There's a bunch of different varieties of shishito you can grow. This one's a little bit longer and it's a little bit less wrinkly, but it's still quite nice. You blister it, you put some soy sauce and some salt on it, you're good to go. Next up, we have the one I'm very afraid to even touch, let alone taste. This is the Armageddon. So this is the one that if you, <laughs> if you guys want, Jacques and I will do a taste test from mild to hot and this will be sort of the final one. We'll do our own version of Hot Ones if you're familiar with that show here on YouTube. The next one I think is kind of a sleeper hit, Unique Pepper. This is called a Mad Hatter Pepper. This one, I mean the name kind of gives it away. It just has this funky little alien spaceship type of look, but it's a pretty mild pepper. It's pretty prolific and it's quite bushy. I've seen success overwintering it. You have unlimited options when you're growing the Mad Hatter Pepper. Next up, we've got all these Ancho Poblanos. These are great for splitting and stuffing, carving the top off, stuffing something in, roasting them, smoking them, all sorts of different things you can do with these. These weird ones here are Tequila Sunrise, so they're ripe and ready to go when they have this sort of orange, beautiful color. But man, it was a productive summer. It's by far the most productive summer I've ever had in the garden with all this new space here at the Epic Homestead. If you want to see what we end up doing with all of this produce, head on over to the Epic Homesteading channel, which is way more about cooking, preserving, all the systems that run the house, trying to be as sustainable as possible in a modern way. But I got to get this inside. I'm probably going to roast this corn up for dinner. I'll see you guys soon. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.